This is desmoid type fibromatosis. Hereafter in this video referred to simply as fibromatosis. Fibromatosis is a locally aggressive fibroblastic neoplasm of deep soft tissue. Although technically it is a benign tumor in that it cannot by definition metastasize, fibromatosis has a propensity for local recurrence in light of its infiltrative growth into adjacent normal tissues. Because of this, it's probably best classified as a neoplasm of intermediate malignant potential. When invasion of functional or vital tissues occurs, such as joints, important large muscle groups, internal organs, or large blood vessels, significant morbidity or rarely even mortality may result. Fibromatosis typically occurs in one of three main clinical settings, extra-abdominal fibromatosis, abdominal fibromatosis, and intra-abdominal fibromatosis. Extra-abdominal fibromatosis may occur in almost any soft tissue anatomic location, but is most commonly located in the shoulder, thigh, chest wall, or head and neck. Abdominal fibromatosis uh, typically arises from the aponeurosis or fascia of the anterior abdominal wall muscles, such as the rectus abdominis. Abdominal fibromatosis is more common in young females of reproductive age, and it typically occurs during or shortly after pregnancy. Intra-abdominal fibromatosis, as the name suggests, occurs within the abdominal cavity and is most commonly localized either to the mesentery or to the pelvic soft tissue. A subset of mesenteric fibromatosis is associated with Gardner syndrome, which is a variant of the familial adenomatous polyposis colorectal cancer syndrome, or FAP. Patients with Gardner syndrome have numerous adenomatous or precancerous polyps of the colon, and they may also have fibromatosis, benign osteomas of the bones, benign fibromas of the skin and subcutis, and benign follicular cysts of the skin. Recognition of FAP or Gardner syndrome is important, as if this disease is untreated, nearly 100% of patients will develop colon cancer, usually by age 40. Additionally, because these are heritable, autosomal dominant genetic diseases, they may be passed on to up to 50% of the children of affected patients. On gross pathological examination, fibromatosis is usually a firm, poorly circumscribed tumor, although some examples may actually be well circumscribed. The cut surface of the tumor is usually firm, white, whirled, or trabeculated, and often resembles scar tissue. In this particular example, you can see the white world cut surface of fibromatosis here in the central aspect of the specimen. In the lower portion, you can see extension of the tumor into the adjacent reddish colored skeletal muscle. And in the upper portion, you can see white tumor extending into the yellowish fatty adipose tissue. The black that you see here along the lower aspect of the specimen is actually a marking ink that pathologists use to help us determine if the surgical margins are positive. And as you can see here, the tumor comes very close grossly to the surgical margin and microscopically it probably involves the margin. Microscopically from low power, fibromatosis is a pink or light purple colored tumor made of spindle cells that infiltrates adjacent skeletal muscle or adipose tissue. Here you can see the tumor in the upper portion of the specimen and you can see here that it infiltrates and entraps these bright pink or bright reddish colored skeletal muscle bundles. This is normal skeletal muscle down here and this is pink uh, fascia or aponeurosis, the covering of the muscle. If we move in for a closer look, you can see that the tumor is composed of monotonous spindled cells that are arranged parallel to one another into these broad sweeping fascicles. In fact, if you follow the spindle cells, you'll see that they're all are organized in the same direction uh, across the entire field of view. And it's these broad, long fascicles that are the characteristic trait of fibromatosis microscopically. I like to think of these uh, spindle cells as though they were cars traveling on a highway. That, and if they were, the, the highway would be 100 lanes wide and go for miles and miles. And that's the way that I, I usually explain fibromatosis to residents, uh, if that visual image works for you. If you go in for a closer look at high power, 
you can see that the cells have bland nuclei. They don't have much atypia. And each individual spindle cell has a nucleus with a little bit of purple or bluish cytoplasm at one or both ends. And in between the spindle cells, there are these fine pink wavy strands of collagen that separate each individual tumor cell from its neighbor. So that's the hallmark of, of any fibroblastic or myofibroblastic process is a spindle cell with bluish purple cytoplasm that has extracellular collagen deposition separating it from its neighbors. And that's very characteristic of the, of the high power appearance of fibromatosis. Now this is in contrast to smooth muscle tumors, although they do have similar spindle shaped cells, they actually have bright pink cytoplasm rather than this bluish purple cytoplasm, and they do not usually have much intervening collagen. Now if we move over to the periphery of the tumor, what we'll see is that the tumor cells infiltrate in between these bright pink or red skeletal muscle bundles. And the skeletal muscle bundles actually get entrapped and crushed and become atrophic from the pressure that the tumor is putting on them. And you can see these multinucleated cells here. These are not giant histiocytes with multinucleation. These are actually atrophic skeletal muscle cells. And these cells can become so atrophic that the nuclei overlap and look very dark and hyperchromatic and even pleomorphic. And those cells can cause unnecessary concern for atypia or malignancy and can sometimes lead to a misdiagnosis of sarcoma if one is not uh, familiar with that feature of fibromatosis. But you can see that these really are skeletal muscle bundles right here. You can see the nice cross striations. And these around, uh, the spindle cells around the skeletal muscle are actually tumor cells from the fibromatosis. Now in contrast to the uh, thin uh, elongated spindle cells that we saw in other areas of the tumor, you can see right here that the tumor cells become more stellate or star shaped. That is that instead of them being thin and long, they kind of branch out with multiple cytoplasmic processes extending in different directions. And this stellate appearance is not uncommon to be seen at least focally in many cases of fibromatosis. But again, this is a classic pattern right here of spindle cell tumor infiltrating and causing atrophy of individual fibers of skeletal muscle. That's classic for fibromatosis. If we go into high power, you can see that the nuclei have fine open chromatin and small punctate nucleoli. There's very little atypia or nuclear pleomorphism. And you do see right here in the center of the screen a mitosis. Mitotic activity is not uncommon in fibromatosis, and scattered mitotic figures are usually seen, although atypical mitotic figures are not usually seen. Here's another high power view of the tumor nuclei in fibromatosis. You can see that the nuclei have pale, vesicular, or open chromatin, very small nucleoli, and there's very little nuclear pleomorphism or atypia. And again, the tumor cells have a purplish cytoplasm, and in between each tumor cell is a bundle of pink collagen. The collagen separates the tumor cells from one another, and that's a useful feature for fibromatosis versus uh, smooth muscle tumors. Here's another high power view of fibromatosis. The nuclei are very monotonous. They're all similar in size and shape. They have small nucleoli and relatively even or open chromatin and they have purplish cytoplasm on each end of the nucleus. And the pink color again comes from pink collagen. Let's step away from fibromatosis for a second and take a look at this tumor. This is a leiomyoma, a benign spindle cell tumor composed of smooth muscle cells. At lower power, it might appear similar to fibromatosis. It has monotonous spindle cells that are running in broad fascicles, similar to fibromatosis. However, if we take a look at high power, you can see that although the nuclear features may be somewhat similar to fibroblasts and myofibroblasts that are seen in fibromatosis, the tumor cells lack that bluish purple cytoplasm at each end of the nucleus, and instead they have a pink stringy cytoplasm. So the pink here is actually coming from the contractile filaments in the smooth muscle cells rather than from collagen in between the cells. There's actually very little, if any, collagen separating the cells in leiomyoma and other smooth muscle tumors. And so at high power, that's a useful feature in distinguishing fibroblastic tumors like fibromatosis from smooth muscle tumors like leiomyoma or leiomyosarcoma. This is an immunohistochemical stain for beta-catenin. 
usually I think that fibromatosis is a diagnosis best made by regular light microscopy on H and E sections. And I do not routinely perform immunohistochemistry for classic cases of fibromatosis. That said, nuclear expression of beta-catenin has been reported in between 70 to 100 percent of cases of fibromatosis. It's important that you pay attention that we actually have nuclear staining in the tumor because cytoplasmic staining, this granular uh, deposition of stain that you can see in the peripheral cytoplasm of the cell, that can be seen not only in fibromatosis but in many other spindle cell tumors and reactive proliferations, including scar tissue. But nuclear beta-catenin in spindle cell tumors is very rare outside of the context of fibromatosis. So in difficult cases, beta-catenin can be useful. This case is a pretty nice example, and you see the dark staining here and there and there. Those are individual tumor cell nuclei that are expressing beta-catenin. It can be a difficult stain to interpret because granular cytoplasmic staining can cluster near the nucleus and give the impression of nuclear staining when it's actually only cytoplasmic staining. So that's an important pitfall to be aware of. Additionally, fibromatosis may express smooth muscle actin, and some cases can express desmin, but usually desmin is negative. Fibromatosis is interesting because there is an underlying molecular mechanism that explains this nuclear accumulation of beta-catenin. Fibromatoses that arise sporadically, that is not associated with FAP or Gardner syndrome, usually have activating mutations in the CT NNB1 gene, or the gene that encodes the protein beta-catenin. So those tumors have an activation of that gene and have increased expression of the beta-catenin gene and thus buildup of nuclear beta-catenin protein. Fibromatoses that occur as part of the familial adenomatous polyposis or Gardner syndrome have an inactivating mutation of the APC gene. That's the adenomatous polyposis coli gene, the same gene that is defective in patients with FAP. The normal function of the APC gene is to produce a protein that breaks down beta-catenin. And when the APC gene is inactivated in Gardner syndrome or FAP, beta-catenin is no longer normally degraded and it then builds up in the nucleus and results in nuclear accumulation and growth of the tumor. So regardless of the molecular pathway, both sporadic fibromatoses and syndrome-related fibromatoses both have the same end result of increased nuclear beta-catenin. And we can test for this by immunohistochemistry as seen here. Now let's take a look at a few additional examples of fibromatosis to see if the diagnostic criteria we just discussed holds true. This uh, case is very similar to the previous case and that in the lower part of the specimen you see that pale purple or kind of off-colored pink tumor and you see that it has an infiltrative border where it invades the adjacent bright red skeletal muscle and you can see entrapped even from this low power you can see entrapped bundles or fibers of skeletal muscle that are being entrapped and compressed If we go in closer you can see that more clearly entrapped and atrophic skeletal muscle fibers the tumor cells are spindled and monotonous and arranged in these broad sweeping fascicles, just like in the previous case. And at higher power, again, you can appreciate, like all other fibroblastic and myofibroblastic tumors, that the tumor cells have purplish or bluish cytoplasm and intervening collagen fibers. And the tumor nuclei are bland and monotonous and they lack significant atypia. Here's an example of abdominal wall fibromatosis. And you can't usually tell histologically, at least at first glance, where the tumor is arising from unless you can see adjacent normal structures. This particular piece of tissue doesn't have any adjacent uh, normal skeletal muscle or bowel wall, but it does still have the classic features that I've shown you. Spindle cells running in broad, sweeping fascicles. At higher power, the nuclei are bland, and there's collagen between the tumor cells. This is another example of abdominal fibromatosis. And this case came from the abdomen of a young woman who recently gave birth. And you can see here the tumor fills the, the right-hand side of the screen. It's growing up from the abdominal musculature towards the skin. And this is the skin surface here over on the left side. There's the epidermis. Here's the dermis and the underlying subcutis. So the tumor is actually growing almost all the way up to the skin surface. This particular example is nice because it shows these dilated ectatic blood vessels that you often see in fibromatosis. And again, the very broad fascicles, all the tumor cells 
are arranged parallel to each other and many cells across are all lined up in the same direction and form a broad sweeping fascicle that goes across the entire screen. Now this is an example of mesenteric fibromatosis and the reason we can tell that is that at the upper portion of the specimen you can see the small intestine mucosa here. You can identify that because of the papillary structures. These are the villi that are extending from the mucosa into the lumen of the bowel. This is the bowel wall and here within the bowel wall is the fibromatosis. The features are very similar to all of the other fibromatosis we've seen. The broad fascicles, the bland monotonous tumor cells with intervening collagen. This is uh, an extra abdominal fibromatosis from the shoulder and this one shows a few uh, slightly unusual features that may sometimes cause confusion. First of all, the fascicular growth pattern is not quite as obvious in many areas. The tumor cells, instead of being spindled, have a more stellate or star-shaped appearance and are arranged a little more haphazardly. And the background is pale and edematous or myxoid. For cases like this, going to the periphery of the tumor can be useful because we will sometimes find areas of fascicular growth. These are the broad fascicles and also entrapped skeletal muscle cells that help us with the diagnosis. In summary, fibromatosis is a locally aggressive spindle cell tumor of the deep soft tissue and the most characteristic histologic features are the presence of broad sweeping fascicles of fibroblasts and peripheral entrapment and atrophy of skeletal muscle bundles.